The human population on Earth is set to continue to rise, which means humans will need more space for agriculture, housing and industry. This extra space that is needed means wildlife is affected as humans spread further into undisturbed habitats. Government agencies that overlook development projects into new areas must gather data to assess the effects the development may have on wildlife, taking a specific focus on endangered species. Biologists will collect data on how many endangered species are in an area and whether a new development may affect their food, water and sources of shelter. The worst case scenario is that the development affects an endangered species to the point it becomes extinct. This means no individuals of that organism exist anywhere on Earth and they have all died. Based on the data collected, a decision is made whether a development can be approved or not. Therefore, the government agencies have a responsibility to monitor, improve and protect the environment whilst balancing human needs. Food production for human needs is provided by farming. Farming is what allowed humans in the first place to grow in such numbers because farming methods can produce a lot of food for the space they use. Yield refers to how much produce a farmer makes. More crops, more yield. More meat, more yields. Farmers use fertilizers, pesticides, methods for controlling disease and battery methods, all because they have the advantage of improving yield regarding crops and meat production. All these methods, however, do come with disadvantages. Fertiliser and pesticides have chemicals that can be washed away into waterways, which can have negative effects on organisms. When a farmer spreads fertiliser, there are guidelines and laws regarding when to do it and how much to use. If fertilisers enter the waterways, it can cause the dissolved oxygen in the water to be reduced which in turn can kill off a lot of aquatic organisms and produce a dead zone. Here is the sequence of events that lead to this. Fertilizers and untreated sewage enter the waterways because excess rain and bad timing of fertilizer application causes nutrients to flood into the water. This causes a big increase in nutrients, including nitrates, phosphates and potassium. The surface plants, and specifically surface algae, experience rapid growth, utilising the abundant availability of nutrients. The algae specifically creates a layer on the surface, which blocks the light from reaching underwater. Plants that live underwater can no longer photosynthesise effectively and start to die, and therefore they are not releasing oxygen into the water. This is just the beginning of the dissolved oxygen levels dropping in the water. The algae and plants eventually use up all the nutrients and die off. Remember, this is a random increase in nutrients and the waterway in this specific location can't support that high number of plants for an indefinite amount of time. The microbes in the water start to decompose the now dead plants and algae and break them down and the microbes begin to reproduce and multiply. They use oxygen via aerobic respiration to do this, which causes the dissolved oxygen levels to decrease even further. The dissolved oxygen levels are now so low, animals start to suffocate and die. This area is now described as a dead zone. The scientific name for this process is called eutrophication. Farmers use antibiotics to reduce the incidence of disease because disease would reduce the output that animal would have for things like meat, eggs and milk. The disadvantages of using antibiotics is that if you use too much, they can be found in the actual meat product itself and can lead to an increased level of bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics. This is when bacteria who are more resistant to the antibiotics survive and can produce more bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics. The worst case scenario is that we're left with bacteria that can cause infections and the antibiotics no longer work. Battery methods involves having animals living in very close proximity to each other to maximise the space available to the farmer. The aim being is to get as much animal produce per square metre as possible. These methods can have negative impacts on animal welfare and this could also mean the animal is not treated humanely and is suffering. In the next lesson, we will take a closer look at pollution and what indicator species are.